That's funny, huh? This is funny. Oh, it's recording. Yeah, you gotta get that real stuff. I wanna be like stretching during this. Okay, me too. You know what my intro is? What? What it do, baby booze? I just came up with that. Okay. Okay, so. What's your name again? Um, Danny K. I'm meeting him so you're flat. <laughs> but you just, you just celebrated a huge day, dude. Oh, thank you. Like, that's big. Like, that's huge. And actually, I'm so proud of you for that because, like, a year is a long time. Yeah. It's a really long time. So I got you, like, a healthy cupcake, aka a muffin. I don't know if you like chocolate chip, but this is my, like, Congratulations Aww. thing. You can go for it and eat since you never have to. I thought I'd get you an apple afterwards. Like, after yeah. I got that one. <laughs> Thank you. Get the cupcake. Mm. But yeah, what was that? What was that like for you? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you wasted no time, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like. <sighs> mm. For anybody that doesn't know, I took a year of sobriety, so no alcohol or drugs. I've used since December 15th or 16th of 2018. So yeah, it's uh, it's uh, been a, a journey. To... Damn, how'd you get through that? I mean, that's hard, you know, especially the beginning. But and, oh, did, you're not allowed to have anyone at your place. No. Why? Um. I can ask, but um, yep. I know sober living, it's like, that could put people in jeopardy. Because and then if I do it, because then everybody else gets to do it, and it would turn into chaos. So there has to be some type of structure, yeah. and they got to keep it a safe environment. And I think HIPAA, HIPAA yeah, is uh -huh. something with confidential, so confidentiality. you're not supposed to know if I'm here or not, blah, 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 oh. unless... You have warrants or a search warrant, then police are able to come in. But like, I didn't even think I, yeah. I did that. So HIPAA, thank you, whoever signed HIPAA law. Well, Everyone, yeah. Like, Dang, that's interesting. Yeah, I was I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I believe there's some. There I, has to be. There has to be some type of like confidentiality. Otherwise, like. You know, there could be a celebrity living where I'm living, and then, you know. That's true. Yeah, so they gotta keep it under wraps. Cause you know, you it's, for some people, it could be an embarrassing or humility experience, especially, I don't know, it just, you know, I don't like, I didn't like talking about it at first, but now it's, uh, it's like whatever. I just do it so other people, so I can lead by example. You know, so if somebody's thinking about it or they don't want to do it, I can tell them I did it and uh, it was a good experience. And right now where I'm living, there's only, there's like 15 rooms, so like 30 men can live there. And right now the house is empty and there's only two of us there. So uh, I'm like, go home and no, there's like nobody around. It's like a ghost town and it's, um, grateful I got in there when I did because it just opened a month ago and they're very strict on who they let in so you have to have like you got to be a productive member in your recovery in order to be there and I really like that because if you come in and uh, you, you're just there for the bed or whatever or the affordable rent then uh you know, usually you're probably gonna end. Usually you're just gonna be the one causing the uh, the problems. My number one thing is character comes first over everything. Yeah, Family, yeah. friends, gym, hobbies, job. Because without character, um, you won't have those things. You can have those things, you know? But the question is for how long? So I gotta constantly work on my character every day. That's the way I do. I, went back to a previous employer that said he would hire me back if I got my act right, which I did. And then on the weekends I would work uh, like doing moving gigs with my old roommate. So uh, I did that and then I kept the same routine because consistency is key, which, uh, you know, it's hard for, I don't know, it's hard for people to see that or comprehend that, even though it's so basic. 
and it's hard to do it. Yeah. Because it's like to well, be consistent, like that's oh my goodness, I have to do this very. I have to build this habit when I already built this habit. So at the same time of me building a new habit, I have to remove the other habit. Yeah. Well, with us, it's like kind of feels like like a inner pain, you know, when you have to do the same things over and over, and it's just boring. It's just like it sucks. But then like when you get when you do the right thing like that and you suffer through that, same with the gym, you know, if you want to get big, you got to feel that, that pain, you got to feel those muscles contract. And, uh, shit, I already forgot about that. I'm sorry, I'm still smoked out. Um, that's why I keep doing what I'm doing. What do you mean, smoked out? Oh, brain's not back to normal yet. They say it takes about 18 months. Interesting. Yeah, and then your brain can, uh, Cause like they've done like I've seen like pictures where they've done brain scans and they show pictures of your brain like at zero days, six months, a year, and eighteen months. And eighteen months is where your brain starts going back to normal. Um, what drugs do that? Uh, fuck, I would say them all. They all do that. Yeah, that's true. Or at least all the ones I did. <laughs> that's true. Does weed do that? I, I believe so. I mean, it definitely I, does something. Yeah. It, uh, Anything that does like a head change is obviously going to rewire your brain. I mean, prescriptions, you can see like antidepressants and everything. Yeah. Like, does that rewire? I don't know. I feel like I feel like everything kind of does. It always rewires. Okay, sorry. Good night. Okay. Um, I have some page. Um, you were saying... Oh, about pain. Doing so, yeah. the same thing over every day. So, yeah, it's a pain. I'm in phase four, and I still go to my same uh, places or meetings. I go to a lot of men's meetings, which is good, you know? For a lot of people in the fourth phase, they want to go to a co-ed meeting, and they just want to see the girls, and then they forgot why they're there in the first place, you know? And uh, you just see it over and over and over again. You just see these guys get taken out by girls. It, it's, not necessarily, it's not the girl's fault, it's the guy's fault, you know? Yeah because uh, they don't have boundaries yeah. that uh, we've learned in the CBT classes where we go around and talk about boundaries, you know? And that's when it's easily, you can easily identify it like, oh, this is where I screwed up at, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of just basically with having boundaries with that. But, uh, Do you see a physical change? Like you actually see the change the drugs had on you, mentally, brain-wise. I, it was funny, you know, one of my speaks, I was like, well, I guess I came in here, shot out a year ago, and everybody started laughing, because people see it in you before you can even see it in yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I still feel like I have the same mentality of uh, when I came in to get sober, like the intensity. So like, it's really easy for other people to see my flaws before I can see him, you know? That's why you continue working on yourself that way, you know? You can keep yourself in check. Plus, like people of my type are sensitive people, so it's really hard for- What do you mean your type? Alcoholics and addicts. Okay, okay. We're sensitive people, so like if you tell us our flaws, you know, we can build up anger towards anybody that says that, or we can get frustrated. It's called, a. Uh, uh, like a resentment is how you put it simply and uh, so that's why I continue to work on myself so so if someone does point out a flaw to me I know how to uh, take that in without building up a resentment or anger or get frustrated and I can laugh it off because I know it's true you know so if I can point it out myself first and then somebody else says it you know, it's, it's a lot like, easier. It's confirmation. Yeah, so that's why it's so difficult for me to even, like, tell people their their flaws, you know? Mm. I, I kind of just keep away because I don't want them to build, build up a resentment towards me, you know? But I know there's going to be... I know the longer I stay in recovery that uh, there's going to be times where I'm going to point it out to them, you know? To let them build that that way they actually do what they need to do they're gonna have a better spiritual awakening mm, I would say experience. spiritual experience than I have and they're gonna go oh shoot that's what it was 
Yeah, because uh, like success teaches us nothing, only failure teaches. So you have to uh, fail. Everybody fails, you know. It just sucks to, to, yeah. to feel that. It's hard to cope with it, too, you know? Like failure is like, oh, shit. Yeah, first thing you want to do is not admit it. Yeah, like, I want to run away. No, 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 I didn't fail. Bye. Yeah, or not tell anyone. Yeah. Especially at work, you'd rather just try to hide it out. But when you do that, it, becomes it, always, guilty. it always comes back tenfold. And it, you have, uh, it feels so much better just when you tell the truth and you're not holding that in. Because if you hold it in, you're basically already blowing up a lie and then that can build up. And if go, you yeah. can't identify it, 